Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. The Phrygian chord is a really beautiful, really strong and also quite modern sounding chord that you can use in a lot of different ways. So in this video I'm going to cover four or five different ways that you can use this as a reharmonization or as a chord substitution. The way I'm going to do that is that I have a chord melody arrangement of the song I Fall In Love Too Easily where I'm using this chord quite a lot. Actually I'm using it a little bit too much but uh, it's also just an example of all the different places where you can use it within a song. So that's what I'm going to cover. I'm first going to play that arrangement and then I'm going to break it down. And that's going to give you some ideas on some of the many places where you can use these chords. Now this is of course focused on how you use the chord if you are reharmonizing a standard, uh, making an arrangement or if you're composing music yourself. But it's also going to give you the information that you need if you want to use this as a reharmonization in a solo and some of the places where it might work well. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and prove the way that you solo, check out some interesting chord voicings or arpeggios, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. That was the arrangement. Let's just first look at what a Phrygian chord is and what I mean when I'm talking about Phrygian chords in this context. Because what I'm talking about here is that if we have a Phrygian chord, then it's a dominant chord with a suspension and a flat 9. So that means that if it's a G Phrygian chord, then it's a G7 sus4 flat 9. And the most common way to play that as a voicing is to play um, a major 7 flat 5 voicing from the flat 9. So that means if I'm playing a G Phrygian chord, then I'm playing a G7 sus4 flat 9. And I would be playing that by playing an A flat, so from the flat 9, A flat. A flat major 7 flat 5. Also, the, this is actually the exact voicing I'm using most of the time in the arrangement. So this is one way of playing it. Uh, you can do several things with it. You can also just really play. So essentially, this is a G7 sus4 with a nine. Now it's a flat nine. That's a Phrygian. Another common voicing would be this one. And here we get. We're, I think the focus is a little bit more on getting the flat now. This one, if I want to have the G as the high note, then this works as well. And of course you can play these on other string sets as well and explore it like that. So, but I think most of the time this is being used a lot. Uh, if you don't have to play the root, you can also play that like this. Or actually you can play the root like this. But I'm pretty sure Guitar Pro can show me this chord as a chord diagram. Two of the most common places where you can use a Phrygian chord is in straight cadences and then actually cadences to major or minor chords. And that's also what we have here in the first four bars of the example. So the first part of I Fall Not Too Easily is a cadence to E flat major. And here I'm using it on the dominant chord, so on, on the B flat 7, where normally you would expect B flat 7 like this. But I'm playing the Phrygian chord, so just for a different sound. It fits with the melody here. If I have a B flat, it will fit if the fifth is in the melody. Uh, and actually, you can even get it to fit if, if the 13 is in the melody. But then you get a slightly different sound here. 
because normally if you have a Phrygian chord, then of course you would use Phrygian on it. So, so in this case that would be playing G flat major over this B flat Phrygian chord or B flat seven sus four flat nine. Uh, but you can also play the version where you have a 13 on the chord. And that's a little bit like playing an A flat minor major over a B flat. So that's A flat melodic minor you would use in that case. So that's what I'm using it there. And then of course the song continues to E flat to A flat. And then usually you would have a complete cadence to C minor, so D half diminished. Uh, let's see, so. Seven to C minor, and here I've just substituted that entire cadence with a, a Phrygian chord. And of course, when you're using it in that context, you can also say, Well, I'm gonna start just with the suspension. Um, is there as well but in this case uh, it makes more sense to just really use the sound and, and change it up in that way another standard that's actually lends itself really well to this is night and day because usually the changes for night and day would be a flat to g7 to c it's in c major uh, but you can actually in exchange that entire cadence just with a g7 sus4 example where which you may already know also if you saw my video on reharmonizing uh, Stella by Starlight then of course that first cadence which is a, a minor 2 5 to D, ma uh, D minor would work as well so you have so there, that's another place where you can add like an A7 the reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that there is a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. If you want to take part in making all these videos, then check out my Patreon page and if you join us over there, then I can also give you something in return for your support. For the next four bars, I'm not adding any Phrygian chords and that's really just because there are no new places where I can add them and I find that the melody sounds better with other changes than a Phrygian chord. So the first part is just this 2-5 to C minor. Here, I think the, the two fives just sounds better than, than having a Phrygian chord there. And of course, I also already just had a Phrygian chord on a G7 instead. Uh, so then we have the C minor to D7. And then here, in the way that I play it, there's also a minor two five at the end of this, these four bars. And again, I could have done I could, could have done a Phrygian chord here. But uh, again, it's just the G7, we already had that, so that's, that place is kind of covered. And then we're moving into the second half. Of course, if you want to check out a transcription of the entire chord melody, the way that I'm playing it, you can check it out on Patreon. If you're supporting the channel on Patreon, then you can download a PDF or a Guitar Pro of the, this chord melody arrangement. In the second half, where usually you would have A half diminished to D7 flat 9, I've cha changed that into a Phrygian chord, so we have a D7, so it's 4 flat 9 here. And in a way, when you look at a, at a minor 2 5 cadence like this, so A half to minus D7, then the Phrygian chord is really similar to just playing the two chords of so the A half diminished with the bass note of the dominant. So in that way, that also kind of fits with the idea that a two chord is very much. A suspension of a dominant. So in that case, you can also hear how this, in this case, the, the bass note is important because that's really the only thing that's changing. We're still just playing something that would fit with an A half diminished. And th the difference is really just that we have another bass note that want what we expect if we know the song, and also that we have this dissonance between the bass note and the flat nine. Then to G7, and I'm playing that where they used to play this G7, which is where the G7 that's coming from the diminished scale. So I'm playing, in the beginning it's not too clear that that's what's happening here because we have the B in the melody. And then 
flat five up to the five and then this voicing which is a G7 with a 13 on flat nine. Moving on here to what usually is a G half diminished C7 and I turned that into a C Phrygian chord. So I think first use this voicing and then this one to F minor and then a C7. And then the last line, uh, so the sheet music that I have here, I just noticed that uh, it actually has a different melody than, uh, than what I play and also that, that I know. I'm fairly certain that the word, one I'm playing is actually more correct, but, um, but now, I'm, now I'm beginning to doubt. So it could be that I'm harmonizing a, a wrong melody, that, that option is available. You can leave a comment if you know the melody to be the same as what's on the sheet music here. What I have usually is that I have F minor and then to, with a C in the melody, to a B flat in the melody, and then I'm harmonizing that. So this is really, the, two chords, so it's a subdominant chord, so it's basically a four chord, going to B flat, which is the backdoor dominant, that's basically a four minor chord, and then down to, uh, usually, actually, I will play here either a, a G7 or an E flat major, and in this case I turned that into, so, this is another place where you can use a Phrygian dominant, where you can use it as a as a substitution for a tonic chord. So in this case, you would have an E flat major normally, and then I'm turning that into a G a G Phrygian chord, going to C7, and then we get the cadence back. So the idea of using a Phrygian dominant instead of the tonic. So there are two ways you can do this. This is the first one. And in this case, I have the third of the chord in the melody. So the third of the, the key, the E flat major. And that's becoming the root of the Phrygian chord. Like this. Uh, if we take that to uh, night and day, for instance. Then that's this sound. And of course, it is a sound that's pretty far away. In I Fall In Love Too Easily, it works quite well because it's in the middle of a movement and it's a little bit more of a radical sound in Nine Day because in Nine Day we really have this cadence and then we're supposed to get a resolution and then we get this sound instead. But that in a way also makes it work better even. So that can also be something to, to really use for that reason because you're really expecting a resolution and you're really getting this other very distinct sound. Thinking in terms of expectation and, um, and, and sort of disappointing expectations like this is something that's extremely useful if you're working with um, with arranging and reharmonizing because you want to surprise the listener once in a while. If they really expect one thing, maybe give it to them the first time and then go somewhere else the second time. That's something that works extremely well for an arrangement. And the final cadence is also resolving in a similar way to a chord that you don't expect uh, because we get first the F minor seven and then to the B flat seven, back to E flat major, of course. And I've changed the melody a bit here because I needed to play, I wanted to have a high E flat up here. And then instead of playing an E flat major or an E flat six, E flat major six chord, then um, I turned that into an E flat Phrygian dominant. And that works as well here. You can look at this chord as being sort of a Neapolitan subdominant, so an E major seven with an E flat in the bass. And in that way, it's just sort of mixing two things together. You also have a really good picture of what it sounds like if you play a Neapolitan subdominant and the bass player is not aware that you're going to do that and he's just still gonna be playing the root. It sounds like this. And that's a really nice sound as well. If you have the root and the melody on a chord, you can of course use it like this and, and, and get a completely different sound out of it. This covers most of the ways that you can use Phrygian chords and hopefully because it's put into the context of a song that you maybe already know, or at least you have the, the reference of the song, and the melody and the key, and that's going to give you a better idea about what they sound like if you use them in different contexts. I think when you're trying to learn a new chord sound and experiment with it like this, then putting it into use in songs that you already know and hearing how it works and not just uh, just playing the chord isolated, I think is a much better way to actually get it to work because it's also going to put it into 
a context of music and hear how it sounds if you're using it. That's what this covers. There are a few other ways that you can use this sound as well, but they're more related to soloing and, and changing the sound of the chords in a solo. If you want to check out some more information on how you can use chord substitution and reharmonization when you're arranging or composing music, then check out this playlist where I'm covering how to reharmonize some common progressions and also a few standards. If this is the first time you see one of my videos and you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.